Alright everyone, and especially Super Mario Brothers fans, you're probably all wondering my thoughts and what I think of the new Super Mario Brothers movie that just recently released by Illumination, which, as you know, is an animated reboot, for se, because, well, we did get an original Super Mario Brothers live-action movie back in 1993, and, wow, that was 30 years ago. Yeah, I remember seeing it the first time, and, yeah, I was not a fan of this one. I rewatched it several times, and even after all the cult following that it got with its fan base and people saying, go easy on it, it's the first of its kind, because, yeah, it was actually the first movie based on a video game, not about video games, which there were several of them before, but, yeah, this is the first time ever adapting a video game into a movie. It was actually the first movie based on a video game, not and even after all the talk and people saying, like, you know, go easy on it, my opinion hasn't changed. I'm one of those that nitpicks this movie to death, the casting, all the things about it that basically have nothing to do with the video game, whatever. If you liked it, that's fine. I, on the other hand, really didn't, and even after the speculation of getting a sequel, which obviously won't happen if you're expecting Bob Hoskins, may he rest in peace, returns to that role, well, it didn't. Instead, we got this many years later. So, how does this one hold up? I was excited, but also skeptical at the same time. Obviously, I anticipated it for this year, because growing up as a kid, Super Mario Brothers, as a gamer, was a very important part of my childhood. And even to today, as a gamer in general, it's very important. I mean, it's one of the biggest video game franchises of all time, and it's still growing strong even to this day. I mean, it's about an Italian plumber, alongside most of the time his brother Luigi, who go set out on adventures and rescue a princess. For the most part, you know, you have spin-off games and everything like that, and the bottom line, this is Nintendo's definitive franchise that, like I said, is still growing strong today. So, making a movie about it, Definitely had a lot of potential, and seeing how it was going to be animated this time, similar to, like, the cartoon series, which I did like, for the most part. You know, they weren't flawless. They had the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, Super Mario Brothers 3, and Super Mario World. I didn't mind those series that much. I mean, they tied to the video games pretty well, despite taking some liberties. So, when I found out that Illumination, yeah, surprisingly not Disney, being how many trademarks and studios they bought out, this time Illumination, alongside Universal, which, yes, I find funny how Universal is building in Orlando, and already has, of course, in Hollywood and Japan's park, being that, well, Nintendo obviously comes from Japan, that makes sense, a Nintendo world featuring Mario attractions along with several others. But anyway, yes, Universal and Illumination... The same studios that gave us the Minions, Secret Life of Pets, Sing, and a bunch of others, as well as another animated movie, which I saw a sneak peek trailer for that's coming out this year called Migration. Okay, let's not get carried away here. Yes, they'd be the ones to make this movie, and being that it's animated, like I said before, definitely opens up a lot of potential. And as soon as they revealed the casting choices a few years ago... This is where I got a bit skeptical. Most of them were great, except primarily for Chris Pratt voicing our main character, the which movie was named after, Mario. Yeah, we all know Chris Pratt as Star-Lord in the MCU, Guardians of the Galaxy universe, whatever, as well as the Jurassic World movies, which I know in the end, especially with the last one, didn't turn out so well. But nonetheless, he is a great actor, and though I wasn't fully on board with him voicing the main character, I kind of wish they got maybe Danny DeVito, but I try not to let it bother me, because regardless, I was still going to see this one. I mean, Charlie Day as Luigi, you know, the typical side character was kind of pushed around. Not a bad choice there. I need to tell her Joy as Princess Peach. Pretty good. But mostly, I think the best choice is Jack Black as King Bowser. I mean, watching this, he really yucked it up. I knew he was going to do great, and wow, he did fantastic. So, how was the movie? Well, after hearing very polarized reception, mainly between the professional critics and the fans, I was still hell-bent on seeing this movie. I mean, I had to, because, like I said, I'm a huge Mario fan, and even though this may have been geared towards kids like most Illumination animated movies are, come on, most of us adults saw the Minions movies, especially the one that came out last year. I mean, we went nuts for that one. It grossed a ton of money at the box office, and obviously this one already did, as you know, it was the highest grossing video game movie of all time, and 
I enjoyed it. That's all I got to say there. A lot of people went in, the audiences loved it, while the critics hated it. So, is it a great movie? Well, it depends on what you're expecting. First of all, yes. As I said, this is an animated movie, so it leaves a lot open to really put in there that's more related to the video games that it's based off of. It mixes pretty much any Mario Adventure game in there. So, you could argue and ask, is it based off Super Mario World? Is it based off Super Mario Brothers? Because they're really kind of different. I mean, one had Yoshi and the other one didn't. It's kind of based on everything in the Mario universe. Now, first of all, yes, there are going to be some minor to moderate spoilers in this, so I must give you a heads up there. If you don't want any spoilers whatsoever, then turn the video off right now. Otherwise, yes. The movie, the main characters, Mario and Luigi themselves, of course, are plumbers. They don't shy away from that, just like the original film, and they live in New York City, or Brooklyn to be exact. They're in the real world, which is animated, almost kind of give me the Secret Life of Pets vibe, especially with the dog at the beginning that almost fights them when they're working on one of their customers' broken sinks. They're, you know, go-nowhere-in-life-as-they're-told type of people, especially with their struggling plumbing business, despite all the TV ads they put up. And yeah, I do like the Mario Brothers rap song that they included in it. Nice touch there. And of course they live with their seemingly kind of blandish, stereotypical Italian looking family, but you don't really see them that much in the movie. And no, they don't give away their real last name. This is never revealed in the movie, even though of course in the original 1993 film, they reveal it as Mario, which I have to agree is pretty ridiculous. I don't understand that, but maybe that's kind of the case that less is more right there. But that's basically the first couple minutes of the movie. In the Mario Brothers slash Mario World universe, this is where they go into a pipe and it transports them into the video game-ish universe, and it's completely different from the real world. So it's like they go from the real world to a fantasy world. It's almost like uh, Disney's Enchanted in reverse, sort of. So, yeah, you could argue that Mario's not familiar with this universe or Luigi. Mario goes into the good world where Princess Peach's castle is, and Luigi goes into where Bowser's castle is. And... You could also argue that Princess Peach is not the one kidnapped, instead it is Luigi. So, yeah. You probably already know that if you've seen the trailers. You know, he's held by Bowser, who, once again, I can't stress any more, is perfectly casted to voice this character. I mean, he yucks it up so much, and you can tell just how much fun he's having here. And, yeah, he's perfectly portrayed well in this movie. He's in possession of the Power Star. And he's looking to, well, not kidnap, but marry Princess Peach. So it almost kind of gives you a little Mario Odyssey vibes right there. And, of course, Mario meets up with Princess Peach. And they don't hit it off in kind of a romance. More or less, Princess Peach this time is a badass. Some may argue that's a little derivative from the video game franchise, but I don't think it's a bad thing. Maybe it would have been a little too predictable if she's kidnapped. But, hey, sometimes it's good to take some liberties. And you got toads, and lots of them, might I say, in Peach's Kingdom, or the Mushroom Kingdom, whatever the hell you would call this. And, yeah, they're just as adorable and funny and goofy as you can imagine. And, of course, one of them accompanies Peach and Mario on their journey to help defeat Bowser. But not till after trying to compete in this obstacle course, which I will say was pretty humorous. But I do have to nitpick one thing, and that is that Mario does not like mushrooms, which... Yeah, all of us can agree is a little derivative. I mean, isn't that all he eats throughout the entire gaming franchise to help grow? And that's what it does in this scene right here. He doesn't like them, but he knows he has to take them. And the obstacle course is pretty much right out of a video game, practically. Yeah, that's what you have to compliment with this movie is all the different Easter eggs. But before I get to that, he has to, of course, team up with the Kongs, Donkey Kong who is voiced by Seth Rogen, and I'd say he did a pretty good job there. And you're probably asking, why is Donkey Kong in this movie? Well, why is Donkey Kong in any Mario Sports or Mario Kart game? Because, well, in case you don't know, Mario originated from the first Donkey Kong arcade game, and he was known as Jumpman. In fact, that makes a little Easter egg towards the end of the movie, but again, let's not jump the gun here. So it's only right to give Donkey Kong credit, being that, well, that's where Mario originated from. So, yeah, it goes to there. You get a little slapstick moments there. And, well, Donkey Kong, thankfully, is not the villain here. He teams up with them eventually. 
And after another little Easter egg, one after another, with the cat suit from Mario 3D World. So yeah, without further ado, here's some of the Easter eggs that you notice throughout the whole movie. You got, of course, like I said, the cat suit. You got Mario Kart that you probably have seen in the trailer. Yep, it makes its way into the movie, going on the Rainbow Road. You got that blue Koopa shell that I'm sure pissed off any gamer who played Mario Kart. You got the raccoon suit, the bullet bills, all the different enemies and Koopas and so forth. You got the penguins that you probably noticed from some of the Mario games as well as the Shy Guys, which, yeah, even from Doki Doki Panic, put into Mario 2 USA. Interesting right there. But it made a cultural impact, and it's pretty much been used in most of the Mario games throughout the generations. You got all the different music. Like, of course, the classic Mario Brothers theme at the beginning. You get the Mario Brothers 3 music that you hear when he gets the raccoon suit. You got the Mario Kart selection theme that you hear when they're picking their carts. You got the underground theme that's played right after Bowser plays that song about Peach that I'm sure people had a hard time getting out of their head after watching this movie, and I'm sure still are even to this day. Yes, the classic Mario Brothers underground theme is played from him on the piano. You got the sliding down the flagpole theme, which is played when Princess Peach is doing exactly that. You got the Mario 64 theme, and hell, you even got the toads that say, Sorry, our princess is in another castle as a joke. Yeah, we got a good chuckle out of that one. And of course, most notably, the Power Star, with the classic Power Star theme, you know, when they get the invincibility. And hell, there's other ones that aren't even Mario related. You got the cafe in Brooklyn, named after Punch-Out. Yeah, that classic NES game. And hell, even Mario playing Kid Icarus on the NES. Which, I do have to question... Is that the original NES, or is that the NES Mini? And, well, I don't think many people will be playing that today. I mean, it wouldn't be the only gaming console that many people would have. I mean, isn't this supposed to take place in the modern days, I would assume? Considering their phones that they use, which are basically modern technology? Just a little bit of a nitpick there, but a nice little NES tribute there. It just seems like a random game out of a whole collection to be playing. I mean, obviously you wouldn't be playing Mario Brothers. But the Donkey Kong arcade game machine, weirdly enough, actually makes a cameo inside of the cafe that I mentioned before named after Punch-Out. So, yeah, not to spoil anything right there, this movie is just chuck-loaded with all sorts of Easter eggs and little tributes to the game. That just about any Mario game to be exact, and of course Donkey Kong and Nintendo games and so forth. So any of you who were disappointed with the 1993 film feeling that was nothing like the Mario games, being that, of course, it was in live action, this one does the complete opposite and answers all those complaints, giving us Mario fans, and any Nintendo fans in particular, exactly what we wanted. And for an hour and a half runtime, I wasn't bored a bit. It may seem like it's a bit overstuffed for that short amount of runtime, and I'm actually pretty amazed they got that much in there. So, you could complain, you could nitpick a lot of things with this movie, it's not perfect, I understand. You know, it's not for everybody, it's not a masterpiece film, but hey, if it's made this much money at the box office and many people have gone to see it, most likely more than once, I mean, yeah, parents have took their kids to see it, and even adults alone have gone to see it. Because, like I said, like me, and like many people who grew up during the 80s and 90s, we grew up loving this franchise, and this is exactly, for many years, what we wanted to see. And I'm sure we're going to get plenty more, being that this, of course, like I said, made a ton load of money at the box office, and it's still growing strong even to this day. And, yes, also, be sure to stay during the middle of the credits and after the credits. Wouldn't dare give it away, but just go see it for yourself. Even during the credits, you get some pretty awesome kick-ass music that sounds just like any Mario game in the franchise. May seem a little random, but trust me, for any Mario fan like myself, you'll be saying to yourself, Oh yeah, I know that theme, I know what game that's from. Trust me, it's all there for Mario fans. It does exactly what it's supposed to. It tributes the games and, well, it's an Easter egg movie, like I said. That's what it's really for. It's for Mario fans, it's colorful, it's very appealing to the eyes, it's funny, it's a little silly, but it's what any Mario fan would really want. That's all I gotta say there. You may like it or you may not, but all I could say is, go see it. Which, I'm sure most of you probably have, and if you haven't, what are you waiting for? Let's a go already, will ya? Anyway, obviously I'm looking forward to sequels to this one, which I'm sure it's gonna get, 
seeing how its box office success is through the roof, and, well, I have been hearing rumors that it's going to start sort of a multiverse. Not a hundred percent on that. I mean, not everything needs to be a multiverse. I mean, it didn't end up like Universal's Dark Universe, where it flopped at the box office both financially and critically, but... I feel like this just needs to be its own thing. It doesn't need to coexist with Zelda, Metroid, and become like a Smash Brothers crossover. No, it should just be its own thing. With Donkey Kong, that's one thing, but with every other Nintendo franchise, yeah, I don't think it should be going in that direction. But for sequels, maybe we can get other villains. I'm hoping for maybe Wario, maybe Waluigi, or hell, even the Seven Koopa Kids. Don't disappoint us, Nintendo. You certainly didn't with this movie. As I said, go see it. My final verdict is, rockin' Wii Remote Wii Motion Plus up, and I'm playing Wii Remote up. Trust me, it's a good fun, silly good time. So, till next time, keep watching.